But what happened if you did an experiment to intentionally gain weight? Well, I did just that. So listen on to find out um, why, why I did that and also the unexpected lessons I got from it. Okay, so welcome to Joyful Eating, episode 168. So today we're talking about how I intentionally gained weight and here's what I learned. Uh, so before we get to that, I uh, the best bite I had recently, I did a photo shoot on uh, Wednesday when I, record, when I recorded this and uh, I made a heap of different things, but what, at the end I just had this idea, I had some leftover ricotta and I had a jar of Nutella or um, chalk hazelnut spread. And I was like, oh, chalk hazelnut, creamy chalk hazelnut pudding. That sounds amazing. So I just like mixed the, stirred a couple of teaspoons through, you know, quarter cup, half a cup of, of rec that creamy ricotta that you get in a tub. And it was just like, it was so good. <laughs> it was like, just like, yeah, just creamy, yum. And maybe next time if I had some roast hazelnuts, I'd put some extra hazelnuts, chopped hazelnuts on top. But yeah, so, so good. Okay, so our plan for today is first I'm going to share the story behind my crazy decision to gain weight, and then I'm going to share with you the unexpected lessons that I that I learned, and then we'll talk about a next steps or so how you can apply this idea uh, to your life. So in terms of the story behind this episode, so actually, uh, like uh, this idea comes up to me occasionally every now and again, I think, well, it really would be good for me to actually gain weight and lose it just so I can, because I, whenever I do work on myself and do things to change my eating and my health, I always get great insights that are really helpful for my clients. And I, so I was thinking, oh, well, maybe it would be good. Maybe it would be good to actually have a project where I intentionally gain weight over a month and then and then lose it. And just like, but from the, in doing that, I'm sure I will learn some stuff that's going to be helpful for people. And of course I had a lot of resistance to doing it. Um, and I was thinking about, I don't know if you remember, like, ever watched Seinfeld, but there was a really great episode in Seinfeld where uh, it was called, I think it was called the opposite. And basically George Costanza did the opposite of everything he would normally do. So if he normally had uh, like I don't know, a ham sandwich, he would have tuna sandwich. <laughs> like, and, or if he would normally say no to something, he would say yes to it. Or if he would normally say yes to something, he would say no to it. And he's like, like completely turned around and he was like really successful. And like, you know, he got like, everything was going really well for him just because he was doing the opposite of his natural inclination. So I was thinking about having like this experiment where I do the opposite for food. Then I was like, no, I really don't want to start eating junk food and like doing the opposite of what I was no, 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 I would normally eat. Or, and I don't want to start like eating in front of a, the TV and randomly grazing and like getting, like doing all those types of things. I was like, that doesn't sound fun. So, but what I did decide, what, what I was thinking um, was that actually it would be really helpful to just do the experiment where the only thing I changed was the quantity that I was eating. So I wasn't going to change like the types of foods that I was eating, but just look at the quantity. And the reason for that experiment being helpful is because I think like there's this narrative in, in the world that, oh, it's, if you eat healthy foods and you don't eat and you like eat more healthy food and eat less uh, unhealthy food, then like your weight becomes this thing that's not a problem. Right. And the thing is that, that that's not true because the amount of food that you eat has a huge impact on your weight. So you can be eating really, really well. And so many of my clients do that. They come to me, they're eating well. Like they, they, you know, they cook for themselves and they, they, or when they go out, they're like, they're eating good quality food. They're not like eating stuff, you know, junk food all day long. Like they may have some of that in their life, but they're not like, you know, just only eating junk food out of the vending machines and, but still their weight's a problem. And so I was thinking it would be helpful to, might be helpful to do that experiment just as more example of that, that actually it's, it's, it's how much you're eating rather than what you're eating that we really need to be concerned about. And um, yeah, there's actually a great uh, documentary. I think I've mentioned this on the podcast before um, called Portion Size Me where two university college students ate every meal for a month in a fast food restaurant but they, the proviso was that they ate the right amount of food for their body. So they weren't overeating, they were eating the right amount of food and neither of them gained weight in that month of eating fast food all the time. And I would consider doing that experiment as well. And I definitely would do that in the future, but where I live, it's like, I'm in the middle of the country. So I'm not going to drive in the car for half an hour to go and have every meal. Um, but I'll think about that. But anyway, so long story short, I decided to 
to do this experiment of just just the only and just changing this one thing of the serving sizes that I was having at my meals and see what happened. And so let's dive in and figure out what were the what were the unexpected lessons that I learned. So the first one, which kind of didn't surprise me, but it may surprise you, was that eating like overeating is in itself is not enjoyable. <laughs> and I like I know this from my work around learning to listen to my body. Like one of the satiety cues is is that when we feel like when we've had enough food, we like, uh, we, uh, we like lose interest in the food. Like it just doesn't, it's not as appealing and we don't really enjoy it anymore. And so that's like one of the things if you're eating and you're like, oh, I'm not really into this anymore. That's a sign, often a sign that you've had enough. So, so, and that your body, like you, you, it's time to stop eating. So when I was intentionally overeating, like I just found like, I would enjoy the first part of my meal and then it'd be like, oh, here I am still slugging away at this like chicken or still slugging away at this salmon. Like, and it was like, it was really like, particularly because I was, I was trying, like my goal was to kind of eat twice as much protein as I normally would, would. So I was serving myself twice as much as normal. And so like, and I was trying to finish my plate and it was just like, oh, those last, like, you know, last half of it was just, it was, it was not, in, it was not enjoyable. And I was like, it was like, oh, what am I doing this experiment for? And it, so it's fascinating, hey, that that the first half of my meal, I was enjoying it. I was really like into it, but then it would just be like, uh, and like, it, you know, the boys would have left the table, everyone's gone and I'm, here's me like slogging away. I was like, right. <laughs> so that was, that was fascinating. The next worst lesson I learned was that overheating protein is actually really hard. Like not from a, like, first of all, there's that non-enjoyment thing, but that, that when you, uh, eating a lot of protein, I was like, so just trying to eat twice as much as I normally would. Um, I actually wasn't gaining that much weight. So even though I was having like twice as much chicken or twice as much steak as I normally would, my weight wasn't going up near, nearly as much as I thought it would. Like it was kind of like, and there were day, there was one day I was like, it went down a bit and I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like, what's going on? And I actually felt really disappointed. Actually, this is that's my third lesson that it is possible to lose weight and feel disappointed. So I, because I'd set that intention that I wanted to gain because I wanted to have this like experience when I had that day that I actually like my weight went down a bit I was like oh man like I actually felt that disappointment I was like I was like that's never happened um so yeah like that was pretty crazy and just and that was a great highlight about how the scale it's really all about our thoughts and our expectations and that we and the disappointment that we feel when we if we do gain weight, it all comes down to like, we can feel that, like I was actually feeling happy on the days that I gained weight when I was doing this experiment. So, so that's kind of, that was cool to write, really understand how decoupled that is and how it's, um, you know, just how you think, how I think about the scale, it determines how I feel about it. Um, so yeah, that was the third lesson. The second one, yeah, just overeating protein is hard. I just, yeah, basically it was, it was like, eating too much, like eating too much food, like getting too many calories, it's hard to do it if you're eating like a lot of protein. And then the fourth lesson that I learned, which is why the, the experiment was cut short, was that, and I kind of knew this, but that overeating really impacts sleep sleep quality and uh, quantity as well. So, so that what I found was that like when I would overeat and eat, like eat my big giant protein meals in the evening, like I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would just, you know, my sleep quality, like the amount of, like, as I measure my, I have a ring that tracks my sleep, that like amount of like REM sleep I was getting and the amount of deep sleep I was getting was significantly less when I was having those big meals. So I did try experimenting with like not having such a big dinner, but having a lot of extra food at lunchtime, but that still didn't, um, didn't have a huge, huge positive impact on my sleep. because so I've got some other sleep stuff going on, some hormone stuff that I think is having an impact on sleep. And I was like, at the moment, sleep's too important. I'm not willing to do this experiment anymore. So I cut the experiment short after a week. And, and yeah, so that was, that was my, my fourth lesson. So overall, I like in the course of the week of me trying to intentionally gain weight by eating just more protein, like not changing what I was eating, I think I like, I gained like three pounds, so like a kilo and a half. And of course, like by the end of the following week, it was back, like it was gone. So I guess that, that was the fourth lesson. Fifth lesson is that it doesn't, I think a lot of people have this thought that, oh, it goes up, the weight can go on really quickly and come off. It takes a lot longer for it to come off, but really the on and off 
thing. It it can be like the it can it can come off just as quickly as it goes on, depending on how much you're eating when you are um, when you are, when you're in the losing phase. So I thought that was that was a really good and interesting lesson to learn. So yeah, so that was that was my experience of intentionally gaining weight. So uh, yeah, what I would really encourage you in terms of next step is. Just do it like you don't obviously have to do this experiment for a long period of time, but just have like do this experiment with yourself where you just have one day where you think, yeah, I'm intentionally going to gain weight and try and do it not by changing, like not don't go out and binge on ice cream, like just go, no, I'm just going to eat more protein at my meals. So I'm going to serve myself if I normally have you know, three eggs, I'm going to serve myself six eggs and eat, eat them, eat all the eggs and just see how that feels and see how much the scale goes up. And also like what can guarantee is like, if you're wanting it to be higher, it, you, you'll off, you'll probably be disappointed, but I won't uh, pre-shadow your, your results. But yeah, I'd love to hear if you do that experiment and try it out. Like, uh, yeah, send me a message. So my um, email is jules at the stone soup.com. I'll put it in the show notes, but yeah, I read and I would love to hear if you do that experiment and, and what happens and what, what you learn from it. Okay. Have a fantastic week, enjoying your food and um, yeah, experimenting and playing around and I will catch you next week.